All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a Lori Vandercrawl here today. She is a productivity consultant and speaker and a trainer who loves to help busy professionals and growing businesses around the world implement systems to create efficiency. And I will say one of the reasons we chose this session is because COVID has disrupted everyone's lives and readjusting your time management has been something I'm asked about all the time for business owners. So we are excited to have Lori here. She's put hundreds of hours into this. She has a certification. She is very well known for this. And I know she is going to offer her time to you um, as well at the end. So Lori, I'm going to hand it over to you and take us away. Okay. Go ahead and get my PowerPoint up here. Are we looking good there? Yep, you're good to go. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for coming. I see a, a few familiar names out there. Um, so I appreciate you all spending a little bit of time in your morning with me. And I'm excited to share the top five keys to mastering your time management. So let's get started. You could all make sure you're on mute. We're, mm -hmm. we're doing a little bit of background noise. Just make sure you're on mute. Thank you. Um, so just a quick little bit about me so you know who you're hearing from today. Um, I founded my company in 2005. I was an actuary before that time and worked for one of the larger companies in town and just realized after some changes within the company, after having children, that being an actuary wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so started my business. And now as a productivity consultant, I help clients to better manage time and their space and their information. So they're clear on business goals, clear on their visions, and can really uh, be efficient and productive in reaching those goals and also finding that life balance, finding time for what matters most as well. Um, I do live in Urbandale, and um, there's a picture of my beautiful family there as well. Here we go. Okay, so I would like to kick off by asking you to enter in the chat box your largest challenge relating to managing your time and getting things done. So when you saw that this was the five keys topic for today, what was the first thing you thought of? What pulled you in to say, oh, man, I really struggle with this or I could really get help with this. Um, so go ahead and enter that in the chat and we'll read some of those off. And, um, you know, I'm sure we'll focus on some of that today. And it's also kind of nice to hear that others struggle with the same things um, as we do as well. I Work-life balance, work-life balance demands of all the meetings and still finding time to get work done, procrastination, uh, getting caught up in daily activities and busy work, uh, staying on top of social, on all social media channels, uh, keeping each work project organized. I can assume that would be hard. Uh, remembering where I was in a task after I was interrupted and staying on top of emails. Distracted by the latest and loudest, prioritizing tasks, just doing it all. Absolutely. Training a team so I can focus on the broader picture rather than doing it all. Uh, all the busy work and could delegate. Yeah, yeah, good. Those are all great. Great ones. And, and you really are touching on some of the things we're going to cover today. Some things we won't be able to dive in today, but I think being aware of your challenges is the first step. Um, and so let's dive right in because I think we are going to be able to give you some quick, quick things you can do to start making some change and attacking those challenges right away. So first I want to share some statistics. I was an actuary, so I have to dive into the statistics with my presentations. Um, but I think it's interesting to see at task.com did a study and they found that um, using a survey, people were only spending 45% of their day on their primary job duties. So if you think about that, 55% of your day is spent on things that aren't related to what you really should and want to be doing during the day. 14% so spent in email, 12% administrative tasks. You have nine and 7% on useful and wasteful meetings, um, a lot of time in meetings, interruptions. So we're spending our time on so many things that aren't helping us really to reach our goals. So I think it's really important to start to increase that 45%. How do we 
make sure we're spending our time on those right on the right things and the things that are help, going to help us reach our goals. So another study that was done by Maui Mastermind Coaching Firm, and this specifically looked at small business and entrepreneurs. They asked, where, where are you wasting your time? Uh, where, where are we spending our time that, again, is not leading to those high value activities? So almost seven hours a day uh, were spent on low, low value business activities that could maybe de be delegated. And somebody brought that up in the chat box that sometimes we want to delegate things, but it takes time up front to train and to do that. And sometimes, sometimes we just do it ourselves. Um, we're really in the long run, it makes sense to figure out what someone else should be doing so we can really spend our time on those high value things. Almost four hours on mental health breaks. And don't get me wrong, mental health breaks are important. We need those. But it's so easy to get caught up in the YouTube, the social media, those, the email, things we're doing where we think we're going to go spend 10 minutes and you end up spending a half an hour. So just being aware of that and intentional about that. Three and a half hours on, on low value email, and I won't go through each one, but you can see that you know we're spending almost almost half of our work week on low value tasks. Uh, we've got some background noise. If everyone could make sure they're on mute, thank you. Um, and so yeah, so we want to make sure we want to figure out how can we spend more of our time on those high value activities, less of our time on these low value tasks. And one more I want to share with you. All of this is causing stress among US workers. And when we look at those main causes of stress, 46% say it's the actual workload itself. And then the other one I wanna point out is 20% are saying it's juggling your work with your personal lives. And I think in the current environment, I would say that 20% is probably increased. Working from home more, having to figure out how to do that, maybe having kids home more and how to balance all of that too. So I think that's even gotten worse in the last year or so. Yeah. Please make sure you're on mute. So today, what are we gonna do? What are the five keys? The five things I wanna share with you around time management is first, we are all unique in the way that we relate to time. We'll dive into that a little bit more and, and why that's important. I'll share with you the 12 critical areas of time management. Time management is huge. There's a lot of different pieces to understand and to tackle. And so I'll share with you what those different areas are. And then we'll break those down and talk about three different really categories of those 12 critical areas. Knowing what's important and how that relates to the way we spend our time. And then knowing how to plan and strategize so we can relate what's important to what we're working on at any single point in time. And fifth is being intentional and how to be intentional about what you're doing at any point in the day. So that's what we're gonna dive into today. So key number one, we're all unique. We're all unique in the way that we relate to time, the what might work for us in the way that we manage time. And so I think it's important to understand that we are all different and where you might fit into different areas of time management. The same tool that works for one person may not work for the person sitting next to them. So it's important to understand that. So if we dive into this relationship to time and look a little bit before we get into specific strategies around time management, let's look a little bit at how our brain functions around time and how we all relate to time a little bit differently. So first I wanna talk about the two types of attention. So we have selective attention and stimulus driven attention. Selective attention is consciously directed. It's our focus. It's internally controlled. So this is where we're really working towards our long-term goals and we're intentionally and consciously working and focused. Stimulus driven, on the other hand, is involuntary. It's those interruptions. It's those unexpected events or tasks that come up. Those are externally controlled outside of us. So it's going to be you know, if you hear your kids scream, you're working from home and you hear a kid scream or a dog bark, it's going to be the email notification, the phone ring, uh, someone stopping in and, and knocking on your door. So these are stimulus driven. And this relates more than to what you're doing short term. And if you're constantly being distracted with these stimulus driven things, then you're not able to focus and work in that selective attention area. And these actually are different parts of our brain. The selective area is the prefrontal cortex, which is right behind the forehead. And the stimulus driven is the parietal cortex, which is right behind your ears. 
So when you get interrupted, you're switching back and forth in these different areas of our brains. And so you can see how that would constantly take you out of focus. And so what we really want to do is figure out how we can spend the majority of our time in that selective front uh, pre prefrontal cortex area so that we can really focus and reach those long-term goals. It all comes down to who's in control. A lot of the times I think we don't think we have control over our time, but we do. We have more control than we think. And it's about understanding, again, where the challenges are and then putting systems in place to start to address that. So one other area of the scientific or behavioral side that I wanted to share was executive function. This again is the way that the brain works and relates to time. And there's two different pieces of executive function. First, you have time horizon, which is the way that we see time. And this can vary based on a few different things. First is age. So as you know, I have teenagers at home. If you are around teenagers, you know that they have a hard time seeing past even the next hour or so. Um, and looking and visualizing time in the, in the future or past a certain point. So age can make a difference as we grow, our prefrontal cortex matures and grows, and we start to be able to visualize and see time a little bit better. Your interest in what you're doing can also help you to see time and visualize time better. How motivated you are to reach a goal can help as well. And then your knowledge or your understanding of where you're going. The, the more you know and the more you understand where, what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go, the easier it will be to see and visualize that time. So what can we do to impact this? First is clocks everywhere. So you can actually see time and visualize time and see it passing by. Uh, one tool that I recommend for this is called the time timer. If you struggle with seeing time, if you have ADD or ADHD, that's, that's it, the challenge you may have is visualizing time. Uh, the time timer is an actual visual timer, which shows you the time passing. And so it's a visual way to see time. And that comes in a physical form where you can just set it on your desk. You can use an app on your phone, an app on the computer. Um, there's a lot of different uh, products and tools they have. So ch check out timetimer.com for that. You can use alarms and reminders to make sure that you have that physical, actual uh, thing that's 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 reminding you where you are and where you need to be and that sort of thing. So alarms and reminders. And then using planning tools and scheduling tools and starting to make that a habit and be, be un, um, more natural for you. And we'll dive into that a little bit later as well. That's all gonna help you to see and visualize time better. The other area of executive function then is temporal discounting. So what this, this says is this, this is instead of how we see time, it's how we feel time. And you maybe have not really thought about this before, that we all feel time differently. So what this means is the further out the reward is, the goal is, the punishment, depending on if you achieve it or not, uh, the further it out it, it is, the less we feel it now. So we have to figure out how to make that more present, how to disengage from, from the short term to be able to think into that long term and feel it a little bit more now. It also relates to how we feel the passage of time. And then also how good we are at knowing what the time is, the time needed is for a task or project. Some people are a lot better about knowing how much time they need to put aside for things than others. And so again, this can you can get better at this with practice and by setting up some habits and systems. So how can we impact the way that we feel time? We can make our consequences more immediate, frequent, external, noticeable, and consistent. So let me give you some examples of this. Uh, for making consequences more immediate, you, you might look at a time where you waited until the last minute, procrastination, right? Where you waited to the last minute and what that felt. Was it stressful? Did you make mistakes? Were you up all night? Were you tired? Were you frustrated? Bringing that feeling back to the present can help make those consequences feel more immediate. You can also make them more frequent. So instead of saying, I've got to sit down and do this for work on this for two hours in order to get it done, and that's overwhelming, and how am I going to do that? I'm getting interrupted constantly. Set aside 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and then I'm going to take a break, and I'm going to check my email, or I'm going to take a walk, or whatever it is. Make those, those deadlines more frequent instead of looking at the whole end result. That can help you to start to feel time better as well. Making them more external, 
that can be um, having someone to hold you accountable, having an accountability partner, just saying it out loud, writing it down, making those consequences more external so that you're starting to feel um, those consequences and the time needed for that as well. Making them more noticeable or direct. An example of this might be you take your laptop to the coffee shop and you say, I need to really work and focus on this for two hours or however long it is. I'm going to take my laptop, but I'm not going to take my power cord. So I know that I only have until my laptop runs out of battery to get this done. So I better sit down and do it. So that's a very noticeable and direct consequence for sitting down and focusing and, and feeling that time pass. And then consistency really comes down to setting those routines, um, using those planning habits, strategizing, and starting to make that more natural. And we're going to dive into that a lot today, too. Having clear priorities will always help you feeling time, knowing what your priorities are, what your goals are, understanding where you have challenges, where those obstacles are for you, and then creating good habits around changing those, those, those bad habits and those challenges that you might have. And this all takes practice. It's not going to happen overnight, uh, but practice will help this become more natural for you as well. So now that you have kind of a background of how we all relate to time differently and can start to think a little bit about how you might relate to time and where some of those challenges are for you. Now I'm ready to share those 12 critical areas of time management. So what are the specific areas where you might have some challenges where you can impact that you might wanna look at a little more closely? So I, I do wanna give you a little background of where these 12 areas come from. There's a tool out there called the Time Mastery Profile. And this was developed by John Wiley and Sons, which is the same creator of the DISC assessment. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the DISC personality assessment. Um, same creator, they created this time mastery profile. So you take a survey, you get your results, um, and it shows you where you have strengths and where maybe you need to improve a little bit around these different areas of time management. And it also takes into account the importance of them in your job. So it relates them to what you do and how important priorities are in your job, how important meetings are in your job. And so you can really focus in on those things that have the highest priority and where you have the greatest challenges. So without further ado, the 12 categories of time management. So you can see them here. I obviously don't have time to dive into every one of these today. We are gonna dive into quite a few of them, um, but I wanna at least give you kind of a background and make sure you understand what they all are. So attitudes, this is how open you are to change. It's how, how well you understand your relationship to time and where your challenges are and also your openness to, to working with others and the differences that they might have with time management. Goals, priorities, analyzing, planning, scheduling. We're gonna dive into all of those more today. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory there, but we're gonna dive into how to impact those today. So I won't get a lot into those right now. Interruptions, everyone knows what interruptions are and how, how a challenge that can be with time management. Uh, meetings, meetings is also an area that's important. Someone mentioned that in the, in the original um, chat box as well, that having too many meetings, not having efficient meetings, that can have a big impact on time management. Written communication, they call it written communication, but I look at this one more as information management. So this is the paper that's coming into you every day, the digital information, the email, all of that information you're having to deal with, that also can impact your time management. If you're spending your entire day in Outlook or an email, you're not gonna be able to get a lot of other work done. So being able to address and manage that information management as well. Delegation, we talked about that earlier in the chat area as well. And procrastination, obviously these are two areas that impact your time management. And then team time, this is really knowing again that everyone's different in the way they relate to time and being able to understand each other and support each other in that time management as a, as a group as well. So that, there's a lot um, to kind of take in with those 12, 12 critical areas. So I like to break it down into different levels, um, which I think helps to understand a little better. So if you look at that high level, kind of the overriding um, area of time management that drives everything else, this is your goals. This is knowing what's important, your priorities, your attitude around time management itself. And then analyzing is really looking back at how you spent your time, 
where you have those challenges and how you might impact that going forward. So this is kind of that high level overriding area that drives everything else. Then at the mid-level of time management, you have your planning and your strategizing, your scheduling, um, your meetings and how you're managing and handling meetings and the team support, how you're working with each other. And then it all comes down to what do I do right now? What are the choices I'm making at any point in time? So that's your information management or your communication, your delegation, how you're handling interruptions and how you're handling and dealing with procrastination. So today we're gonna to dive into a few of those. Really, I picked the areas where one, I see the largest challenge with my clients and two, the areas I think you can impact pretty quickly with some small changes. So first we're going to dive into key number three, which is kind of that high level area, really knowing what's important and how that impacts what we're working on at any point in time. So how do we know? How do we know what to work on at any point in time in the day? There's a million things we can choose from and choose to do, right? So really this starts at that high level, understanding your life vision, understanding your career goals, where you wanna go, who you wanna be, what you wanna do in life, and really knowing what that is. Starting to set those longer term goals. Where do I wanna be in five years? Where do I wanna be in 10 years with my life and with my career, my work as well? Once you really are, are comfortable with that long-term vision and, and it has some excitement and passion behind that, you then can start to look at those short-term goals. So what do I need to do over the next year to start to make progress towards that long-term vision? Then you can look at quarterly goals, monthly goals, and so on. Then once you're very clear on your goals, you can start to develop that weekly plan, which leads to your daily choices. So that any, at any point in time, you really do feel clear on what you should be working on and what's important and that it ties to that initial long-term vision. So all of this fits together and it's all really important to be sure you're managing your time the right way at any point in time. So how do we define priority? Merriam-Webster defines it as something given or meriting attention before competing alternatives. Makes sense, right? But what I wanna point out is given and meriting. So you might be giving something attention that doesn't merit it. So if it's not tying to those longer term goals, does it merit your attention? And so a lot of times we're giving something priority that really we shouldn't. So I'd like you to start to think more towards priority being what merits attention at any point in time and make sure that you're making those intentional choices. So why do we struggle with this? We all do at certain point in times, getting the priorities done, knowing what should we should be working on at any point in time. There's three kind of main reasons we struggle with this. First is you might just need more direction about what's important. Either you don't have clear goals at work, you haven't taken the time maybe to really look at that life vision, that career vision and set those long-term goals. So you need to take the time to understand what your direction is. You might wait for a time when you can concentrate. So you say, too many distractions. I, I can't focus for even an hour right now, so I'm going to have to put that off. I'm going to have to put that off. We do that a lot, and I'm sure that sounds familiar to some of you. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit. I'm going to give you an exercise you might be able to use to start to, um, to think about that and spend more of our time really in that focused, again, prefrontal cortex area so that we're not constantly putting those off and waiting for a time when we can concentrate. And third, you might prefer working on those things that are urgent um, and quick to finish. So we love to check things off the list, right? And so we might just grab those things that are easy and we know we can get done. But then you get to the end of the day or you get to the end of the week and you don't feel that sense of accomplishment because you really didn't get to the big important priorities. And so again, we have to be intentional. We have to make those right choices at any point in time. So here's one exercise you can do. This is a matrix, the urgent important matrix. I'm sure some of you have seen this before, some maybe haven't, uh, but this was developed off of a quote that Dwight Eisenhower said. He said, what is important is seldom urgent and what is urgent is seldom important. And so Stephen Covey took this quote and he built it into, in the seven habits of highly effective people, he built it into this urgent important matrix. 
And what this shows is what you could do with this, you could take your tasks or the things you're working at any point in, day, in the day and put these into the, these different categories. So is it is it important and urgent? Is it something that's important and it has to be done soon? Or is it urgent, but it's really not that important? In that situation, maybe I could delegate it to somebody else. It's not important to my priorities and my values and my goals. You might have important and not urgent. Those are the things that we need to schedule time to do because those a lot of times take that focus time that we need. And then you have your not important or not urgent. And those are things really you can have a don't do list and put those on the list. Those, those are, are maybe, again, those could be delegated as well. But really where we want to be spending at least 80% of our time is in this important and not urgent. And I think the challenge for a lot of people is they're not getting that time to spend in those areas where you really are bringing things forward and, and, and working towards reaching your goals. And so finding ways to find that focus time, be more intentional about spending your time here instead of constantly reacting into the urgent side of the matrix. And I will say there is an app out there called Focus Matrix. And that is an online app that allows you to create your list and then put them into these different categories. And you can work off of something like this even on a daily basis if it's something that really strikes you as something that would be helpful and valuable. Okay, key number four. So now that you understand your priorities and your goals and you know where you want to go and you know what's important, then you can really take the time to plan and strategize so that you are working towards reaching those goals. And planning and strategizing, I will tell you, it's going to help you gain control. It's going to help you gain perspective, which is a lot of times when you're not doing these things, what you're feeling, you're feeling out of control, you're feeling overwhelmed. Planning and strategizing will bring that all in and it really will help you to gain control over your day and start to gain more perspective and realize that things maybe aren't as bad as you thought they were. And so how do we do this? First, I wanna explain how planning and scheduling are different. They're two different things. Planning is deciding what you're gonna do. It's an intention to do something. Where scheduling is deciding when you're actually going to do it. So you're committing to do it at a certain day, at a certain time. So they really are two different things. Planning and scheduling are going to allow you to be more proactive versus reactive. And I will tell you, almost every client I work with, that's one of the first things they tell me is I'm so reactive. I feel like I'm just reacting to everything that's happening throughout the day. I'm reacting to the emails that I'm getting throughout the day. And I'm not being proactive enough. Planning and scheduling is going to help you get to that point where you're being more proactive. So one exercise, pretty simple exercise you can do to help you get, if you haven't done a lot of planning before and you're not super comfortable with it, this is a, a pretty simple way to get started. And really it's about getting everything off your head and onto paper or digitally if you, if you prefer to work digitally. So the first thing you do is you start to think through what you do, where are your different work areas on a daily basis? Those are your categories of work. They might be your annual goals, your goals for the year, your priorities for the year. Um, they may be buckets of work and different things that you do on a daily basis. So just to give you an example of this, these are my categories that I work off of every day, every week. First are my clients and my coaching. So, I, you know, I, every day, every week, I have things I need to do for my clients and my coaching clients. And so that's, that's one of my categories. Two is product development. I have a big goal this year, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, but I'm developing a new planner. And so that is a huge goal for my year. And I want to make sure every week that I'm making progress on that and I have action and tasks behind that. So that's a category for me as well. Business growth and income is another goal for me for the year, so I want to make sure I'm consistently making progress on that. That's a category. Administration, other business. When you own your business, you constantly have administration, uh, things that you need to do related to the business, so I have a column for that. I, I include my personal stuff with my, you know, it's it's so interrelated, and especially now that more of us are working from home. Um, so I, I have my personal column on there as well. I need to know what has to be done for me personally during the week. 
And then my kids, I have three uh, busy, busy kids. So I always have things I need to make sure I do for them. And then my board and board or volunteer work. So you can see mine is really a mixture of my goals and priorities along with things that I just do every week. So an example of what your categories might look like. So that's the first step. And, and I also say um, I have a I've created a page for you on my website that I'll share at the end. And I have a download of this exercise. So if you wanted to just download it and print it off and start to fill it out or print out a couple even, um, you can start to do this on your own and even on a weekly basis, write down your categories and brain dump your, your tasks. So I, I do have a download I'll provide for that. Once you have your categories figured out, then you really just get everything off your mind into those columns. What do I need to do for each one of these categories? And you can think of that as a, on a weekly basis, what do I need to do this week? You can look longer term if you want to really just brain dump and get everything off your mind. You can look long term and then start to put target dates behind those. Or you might even just start simple and do it for a day. What do I need to do today for these different categories? So it gives you maybe a little different way to think about things than you maybe have in the past. And it starts to help you gain control over all of those different things that you have to do. If you're struggling with knowing what tasks you really have around all these different categories, I know sometimes that's a struggle where you, I have this big project and it's overwhelming. I know, I kind of know what the end goal is, but I don't even know where to start. The really powerful question you can ask yourself is what is my next action? What's one step I can take to move this project forward? And then once that action is complete, what's the next action? And then what's the next action? And so this is a really powerful question you can ask yourself to help you get through some of those overwhelming times. So this really is a process I'm teaching you where you're first categorizing, you're taking inventory, you're doing that brain dump of everything you need to do. Then the next step is to prioritize and decide when it's going to happen. So how does that fit into my schedule? And then lastly, you can actually block time and figure out what day, what time of the day can I actually do this and get this done and schedule it in. So you're taking your planning and turning it into scheduling. So I do want to share um, there is a tool that works you through this specific process. It's called the planner pad and it is a paper planner, um, which a lot of you might think that sounds archaic, but I will tell you there is scientific proof behind the fact that writing things down really does help you help your brain process them better. Um, I tried to get away from a paper planner for about a year, and I really missed that, that thinking, that planning, that processing side of writing things down. That said, if you work digitally and you really love digitally and you can't ever see yourself using a paper planner, this same sort of process can happen digitally. Um, but I did want to show you the planner pad is an option where it actually works you through that funnel of doing the brain dump, figuring out what day you're going to do it, and then blocking your time and your schedule. Uh, I wanted to mention quickly that there are some things that I believe are still missing from the planner pad. It's the only planner out there I know that uses this funnel process or this brain dump process, which I absolutely love. But it doesn't do any goal setting. It doesn't do any habit tracking. Some of those other things that I think are important around time management. So I finally decided this year that I'm going to create my own planner. Um, I'm in the process of doing that, and it will be done by the end of the year. So stay tuned uh, for something that actually will, will walk you through the process of what I'm talking about today. So key number five, so you've done your, your goal setting, you know what's important, you're prioritizing, you've done your planning, you're strategizing, you've scheduled it in, you know what you should be doing on a weekly and a daily basis. Key number five then is to be intentional. So what does this mean exactly? This is the last piece of those three levels of time management I showed you. So what do I do at any certain point in time? It's about being intentional about your choices, taking back control over your time. So it's knowing how to manage those interruptions, knowing how and when to delegate things and how to follow up on those, how to avoid procrastination. So it's taking that plan and it's going to be a lot easier to do this once you have a good plan. But we all know that things don't go as planned 100% of the time. 
things are going to come up. And so you're going to have to make choices throughout your day of whether or not to take this new thing that's, that's come up or to do what you had planned to do. And it's okay to choose to do something other than what you planned if you're intentional and in making those choices um, the right way. So one last thing I wanted to share really quickly is analyzing, because again, I think this is something you can do fairly quickly to help you impact your and understand your challenges with time management. It's all about understanding your habits, whether they be good or bad, and then knowing how to impact and change those. So one way you can do this is to use daily time logs. And what I have shown here is just a, a, a piece of the daily time log that I offer. And this is something, again, that's on that page that I'll provide that you can download later and use as a resource. Uh, but this just really, the time log allows you to track your day. What did I do? How long did I spend on it? Was it something I had planned to do? And if not, maybe some notes on, on why I chose to do this instead or why my day didn't quite go as planned. And at the end of the time log, ask some questions. You know, what went well? What didn't go so well? What would you change or impact going forward based on how things went today? So this is really going to help you to under, look back and understand maybe some of those bad habits that you didn't even realize were there and intentionally decide how you're going to impact and change those things going forward. Um, Kaizen is a Japanese word for incremental improvement, and that's really what it's all about. It's making small changes over time, starting to develop those new habits so this, this starts to become more natural. Doing this is also another great benefit of this, is it will increase your time sensitivity. So the way that you see time and you feel time that we talked about earlier, as you start to look back at what you did, how long it took, whether or not it was planned, you start to get a feel for how long things really do take, and you'll start to be more sensitive and start to feel and see that time a lot better. Um, so these time logs, while a lot of people don't love to do them, um, I haven't had one client tell me that it wasn't really valuable and better understanding themselves and how to, how to make those changes going forward. So as I mentioned, I do have this page. It shows there at the bottom on my website, on my website, which is alifemadesimple.com backslash five keys. There you will find those two downloads. And then I also have a link if you're interested in scheduling some time with me. I'm offering for the attendees on the call a free one hour with me a virtual call. And there's, you know, we can really do anything you want on that call. I have a productivity scorecard if you want to complete that. We can go through that and look over your challenges and offer some quick tips and things around that. We can address a specific challenge you might be having. Um, I had one person after a call uh, call me and just wanted to help me work through their categories with them on that brain dump exercise. So there may be something specific you want to cover as well or just general Q&A. Um, anything you want to do with that call uh, is, is, you know, I'm happy to help with. So check that out on my website, Five Keys. And you can find that link as well as those couple downloads that I mentioned. So change takes time and practice, obviously. Um, the good news is that with time management, I've seen it time and time again that small changes really can yield big results. So some of the things we've talked about today, you can do pretty quickly. You can do in the next day or two. And just kind of see how you feel about it. See if you start to gain control, start to gain more perspective, and then take the next step and the next step. Uh, so, so know that it doesn't take, it doesn't, it doesn't, don't be overwhelmed. It doesn't take a lot to make big changes. Um, the, the level of perspective that you start to get and peace and accomplishment is, is well worth any of those efforts you put in. So I always like to ask with my presentations, what will you do next? So a lot of times you go to webinars or you go to presentations and you think, oh, that was all great. I, I learned some things. And then you go back to work and you get lost in the day to day and nothing happens. So I'm asking you if you could think of one thing that you learned today that you might take action on in the next seven days and go ahead and write that down. Because, again, writing it down makes it more direct and external. It helps you process through that a, a little bit more and it's more likely that you'll get it done. So what is one action you can take in the next seven days to start to impact your time management? 
All right, so we have about 15 minutes for Q&A. So uh, you can either enter your questions in the chat box, or if you want to unmute or um, show your video at that time, that's fine as well. And we can talk that way, uh, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay. Questions, you feel free to come back on with your cameras if you'd like to uh, see each other. I think one question I get, uh, Lori, I'll just throw out there to get questions started, is multitasking. So many people have had to multitask and feel more burnout from the multitasking. Any advice on that? Don't do it. <laughs> multitasking, yeah. I mean, it, especially, again, in the home environment and, and going back and forth between home and work, it's it's there, it happens, and that really, it gets, it's exactly what I was talking about earlier with the, the different parts of the brain. Multitasking is switching back and forth. That's what it is. And there's, I think they say there's like 5% or less of the human population that can effectively multitask, that their brain is wired to be able to do that, but the rest of us can't. And so every time you're switching back and forth, you're losing time to get back into that focus or what you were doing before. And so it's all about the, the systems I talked about today, putting that planning in place, setting aside that focus time, knowing, okay, I need two hours to focus on this. Can I go somewhere else? Can I go to a coffee shop? Can I put a sign on my door? Can I turn off the phones? Whatever, whatever it is to stop those distractions. Um, but in order to do that, you have to be clear on your priorities, clear on your goals and have that plan in place. All right, Felicia has a question. Felicia, go. You can go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, I. You mentioned a couple of times ADHD, and I heard words that I. I personally have ADHD, and I own a business and run a team, and that's been a huge struggle of mine. I'm wondering if you do any specialized work or anything geared towards ADHD minds in your coaching and what that looks like. I. I will, I've worked with people with ADD, ADD, ADHD. I have some understanding of it, and I know certain tools and um, visuals and things like that that work. I will say, though, I am not trained specifically in it. There are people who are. Um, so if you are interested in that and want to reach out, we can chat or, um, you know, depending on your specific needs, I could provide you with some resources around that as well. Other questions? Are you all multitasking right now? <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of good feedback in the chat, Lori, so I appreciate that. Um, what do you do to dis disconnect uh, from work to focus on family. That's a huge one, especially for small business owners. So again, the question was, what do you do to disconnect from work to focus on family? Personally, I, um, it, it's, it's about boundaries. It's about that planning. So uh, again, knowing, and I keep pointing over here because I have my planner pad sitting right here um, because I kind of live by that, but having your plan, knowing what has to get done in a week and in that day, and then building in that time, that family time, or, you know, built, and maybe the family time gets built in first. For me, my exercise comes first. I need to get my exercise in during the week to be mentally strong, to be less stressed. And so I build things around my exercise. So it's putting in those priorities, those big rocks, if you've heard that term, and then building around that. So as you're doing your plan for the week, it's looking at that family time as well and knowing where that's going to fit in. And then being disciplined enough to stop work at that certain time. So you go spend time with the family, making those choices intentional. Um, I think a lot of times we get so lost in what we're doing that we just keep working. And then a couple hours later, we go spend time with family and we had intended to do it a lot sooner or it's, it's dinner time, it's bedtime, whatever it is. And so it's stepping back, taking a few minutes to really say, okay, what should I be doing right now? Is it important for me to continue working or is it time to go spend time with the family? 
And so just really setting those boundaries, knowing what your goals and your priorities are. I actually, this, this brings up a good story. I did a presentation um, last month for a group and it was a half a day workshop. So we really were able to dive into those goals and priorities and that life, kind of that life vision and where you want to go. And we had a gentleman in there who um, had a really stressful job, was going back to school. He was doing something else at the same time and he wasn't didn't have a lot of time left for his family and walking out of that session, he had made the decision to put family first and everything else would have to come around it. And I've heard in the meantime that he's spending way more time with his family, taking weekends off. And so it, it, it really is an intention. It's understanding what's important and then being intentional about the choices and, and the boundaries that we put around that. A little bit of a follow-up question to that, Lori. I have had people um, have come to me and said the world has kind of flipped to this 24-7 mentality with COVID. Advice on putting those boundaries in place. It doesn't seem like there's a nine to five anymore and employers kind of expect, you know, their teams to be flexible. Do you have advice on that? Um, small business owners are doing everything again. They feel like they have to because... They need the work. Any advice you want to add on to that? Yeah, I, I do. And I think people that are working from home now, maybe in the corporate world, they're starting to feel a lot like small business owners or business owners have felt for a long time. Because as a business owner, you really kind of are 24 seven. You can always be working. You can always be thinking about your business. And I think everyone's starting to be in that situation now where you have an office at home, you can go plug in if you want, you can work it, you are getting everything on our phones now. And so again, it comes down to boundaries for one thing, but we, we set expectations. So if you're constantly reacting to emails and texts as they come in right away, people are going to always expect that from you. And so for me, I set the boundary a long time ago or the guideline a long time ago that I will get back to clients within 24 hours. And so if I get something at night or after what I consider work hours, I'll respond the next day. It doesn't have to be right then. I may make the choice to respond at that point, but generally my guideline is the next day. So I can take an evening and go to a soccer game or whatever it is and not feel like I'm missing out on something from work. So turning off those notifications, putting down the phone in the evening, really starting to change those expectations that we have for ourselves and each other. And this kind of comes down to that team time and team support with time management too, is what we're expecting from other people. And so really think about that. Like if you send an email at seven o'clock, don't necessarily expect them to respond that evening. You know, that might be their family time. And so we need to, to, to change those expectations we have for ourselves and for each other. We have another kind of follow-up question too, and you kind of touched on a little bit, but it says, do you have any suggestions to counteract the Amazon effect where customers expect immediate answers and immediate product shipment at all hours of the day and night, probably just the boundaries you spoke about, but any follow-up on that? Yeah, it, that's a tough one. Um, I am working with a client right now who's in that situation. And I think with COVID, with, with product turnaround and supplies and, and even just the, the mailing system, Things have gotten delayed. Things are behind. Client, clients are getting upset. And so I think, again, it's being proactive and setting those expectations. So, you know, let them know up front if there may be issues or it may take longer. Um, explain the situation. Communication's huge in that situation. So go to them instead of making them come to you. That's a big thing there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it kind of gets down to just those setting expectations keeping those boundaries. Um, I, I, I hate to say it this way, but it, it, what it comes down to a lot is, again, going back to your life priorities and your life goals. And what's the worst thing that would happen? Is it life or death? If you don't get back to them that evening, what's the worst thing that will happen the next morning? You know, so, so kind of really thinking through those, those choices and being intentional versus just immediately reacting. Sometime the choice will be, yes, I need to get back. This is important enough. I need to get back. But a lot of times it really will be okay if you don't. Um, this did come up in kind of when you were asking about people juggling things with social media. 
Do you schedule time for that? What's your advice on that? I have a lot of clients that are saying, I spend so much time running between because they can message me on everything. I keep trying to find posts or tags to make sure we weren't negatively commented on or respond positively. <laughs> What's your advice on that? I see a lot oh. of clients going in the black hole on that, but they have And I will like be honest, I, I am not perfect with social media either. It is a struggle. And you're right. It's, it's, it's not just email anymore. It's email, it's text, it's direct messages. It's all these different areas that we can be communicated with. And so I guess my biggest solution I would say is to choose a time daily, weekly, whatever that means for you. And it's going to be different for everybody. Maybe you choose an afternoon once a week where you just dive in and deal with social media. I think doing it all at once is more effective than doing a little bit at a time. Um, maybe for you, that's once a day, maybe it needs to be twice a day. Again, it depends on the situation you're in, but setting aside, planning that into your schedule. So it's a planned thing instead of a reaction, um, and setting those guidelines, how quickly do I need to get back to people? So do I need to check it daily? Do I need to check it twice a day? So knowing what those expectations are, planning that into your schedule up front, um, and then, and deciding how much time is worth for you to put into that at any certain time. And again, I can't tell you exactly what that is because that's going to look differently for everybody. For me, I, I don't spend tons of time in social media. Maybe that's right. Maybe that's wrong. But for me, I've decided it's not my priority. I do go out there and I do try and, and promote things and I do try and talk to people, but I have other priorities that come, come ahead of that. So if you work in a business where that's your job is to check social media and to keep on top of that, then that just has to, you have to figure out what that routine is and actually plan that into your week. Notifications on phones. It seems like every app can send you a notification thoughts on managing those on off, some on some off. Any I on that? absolutely would take the time to go into your phone, go into your apps and and make intentional decisions on what you want to get notified in and how often all of them you can, you can customize that for. So I would, I would take some time to do that. And then as you're getting notifications, again, be, instead of being reactive to it, step back and say, did I need that notification? Should I turn those off? Am I getting several a day? And maybe I only want one a day. Do I want to set the, the routine where I actually go in and check Twitter once a day instead of getting notified every time something happens in Twitter. So, um, you know, again, just being in touch at all, it all gets down to that again, is to knowing what you need that fits into your goals and priorities and then how you can fit that into routines and a plan for the week.